So here is the imported PLY format exported from MATLAB. We're going in and we're just deleting some extraneous points. You notice that we made all the points significantly bigger, so it'd be easier to see. Uh, now that they were too big, we made them a little bit smaller. So we can go in and just delete all the, the ones that aren't really connected to the main uh, main density of the point cloud. Um, you see here that we have the kind of we have the head, we have the body, two arms on the side, uh, and then the back is a little sparse. Um, we have uh, still some points that we want to get rid of, so we're rotating around in order to do so. Uh, we do that because we don't want to trick, we don't want the me uh, the mesh generation tool to see any of these points and then try to, as a result, try to generate them incorrectly. So now we're going here and we're we're trying to uh, tell the mesh to find normal, uh, to find the normals, and so that way, or to, to tell the the software to find normals, and so that way when the mesh is generated, it'll it'll know what direction to face. So we use a trackpad, uh, the trackball, in order to identify where those normals will be, uh, kind of like space it away from the center. And then we're using uh, this this mesh generation tool uh, rather unsuccessfully. Unfortunately, the the point density was kind of sparse, and I guess the, the distribution of the overlap was such that it thought this this was kind of this this Cronenberg uh, looking deal. Uh, so it sort of looks like a Dali painting, but it's definitely not an academic testudo. And so, as such, we uh, I moved to use another software called GeoMagic Design X, which we're going to talk about in the video following this. So in this video, I'm going to show how I employed the use of GeoMagic uh, Design X, which is a, a software accessible at Terrapin Works. Um, it's usually used uh, for the scanning for high quality uh, professional scanning equipment, uh, especially the GeoMagic Capture, which is a 3D systems product. Uh, so it's very, very good at taking point clouds and then turning them into uh, watertight manifolds. Uh, usually with uh, professional setups, uh, it has a, a lot more data. And so as such, a lot of the tools that are employed here work a lot better. Uh, and so here you'll notice that we're going down into uh, different categories and we're just kind of parsing through and saying like, oh no, this meshes uh, very few points, um, be very be very loose with the tolerances between the points. And then we're meshing with a, uh, messing with a number of different tools in order to generate uh, a mesh. Um, something that we noticed is that when there are very few points, there's a tendency to Cronenberg, which is a term that we used um, for when things look like monsters. Uh, so the mesh that's generated ends up looking a lot more like a monster than a testudo, which is uh, a function of of the uh, of just the the sparsity of points, or just just the nature of how how without having like an extraordinarily high density of points, something that would be somewhat impractical with this current setup. Um, that that the uh, the mesh isn't isn't really sure how to uh, the software isn't really sure how to do the stitching appropriately, and so as such, uh, we get some of these uh, odd looking features, as you can kind of see here. Um, skipping ahead a little, uh, you can see that uh, the 